and uh, I just had to push something. And so I just thought, well, you know, the man who sings every day is going to have a better voice because he's practicing every day. It's going to be, it's got to be good for you that kind of just get out and do it. So I just wanted to, I had to hit upon the idea of just getting kind of, uh, you know, a bunch of people around me who would play and we could just go out and it didn't matter if it was big time or small time or anything, it'd still be just playing. So um, we did, we went out with a couple of lineups and stuff and I said, you know, Linda was there on keyboards, terrified out of her mind all the time. Poor kid, I tell you. And she was getting picked on something silly, you know. She, yeah. Well, you know, people couldn't accept that just we wanted to go back to square one and just become a little skiffle group again. And when you start off, I mean, Ringo, in that corner there, got blown off the first Beatles session ever because he wasn't considered good enough. He turned into, I think, one of the sort of best rock and roll drummers around, you know. But the very first session, they thought he was rubbish. You know? And we were back at that stage where Linda was absolute rubbish, you know. But it's not, you don't always form groups with absolute technical, in fact, I was thinking that if I formed a kind of super group, like something like Blind Faith with uh, Eric Clapton, you know, and uh, Ginger and kind of, you know, uh, Stevie Winwood, a lot of kind of stars, that that would have its own failings too, because that would, it'd be so intense, that would have to break up. And so we just decided to go this other funky way and just thought, what the hell, we take a van up the motorway and we'll just do what I always used to do. You know, at least I'll get a thing, at least we'll be with people, at least we'll get out of this kind of little room, you know. Do you do a lot of reading nowadays? You watch plays or films or what? Not much, you know. I'm I'm a telly person, probably. A lot, you know. I'm not ashamed of watching telly. I mean, a lot of people don't buy tellys because things are wicked influence and stuff. But I watch it a lot. I get a lot of education off telly. I think. Um, I read bits and pieces, um, but not much. You know, I kind of been getting into a bit of science fiction and stuff, but no, I don't really read much. I used to do most of my reading when I was that time, a little period in my life when I used to take a pipe up onto the top deck of the bus and sit there feeling like Dylan Thomas or someone, you know, reading uh, Beckett plays or uh, Tennessee Ernie Williams. <coughs> you know, I used to fancy all that and I still like a lot. I don't read so much now. Do you think that everything resists analysis, everything that you write, every sort of overlytic poem that you like, everything that you've read, you just don't like analysis of any sort of art Something at all. like rock and roll or pop. I don't feel like it should be that analysed. It's not that... Uh, I feel like it's not that precious. But I don't mean anything bad by that. I just don't like the way you'll get some fellow who's never been into it all his life, he's been into classical. Or the, the rock critic now for the New York Times, John Rockwell, is the opera critic. Or was until a year ago. So the opera critic and then went straight into rock and roll. Well, I can't see that at all, you know, I mean, he starts judging rock and roll by opera, which is, you know, in the first verse he states this and so on. Well, it's like why I haven't learned to write music. There's a sort of vague suspicion that it'd change how I do it too much. I think if I knew officially how harmonies go, I remember the thing where you mustn't double a third in harmonies, it's just not supposed to be a good thing to do. And there's certain things which I, on purpose, once I heard you're not supposed to do it, I wrote like that, you know, just because, why aren't you? Who says you're not supposed to do it, you know? And it's that kind of feeling, you know, of like, the minute you get the expert view, expert views are only good for a few years. I mean, the world was flat once. That was the expert view once, you know. And if you listen to that, you would stay the dummy. You, you positively seem to enjoy making a lot of people happy. I do, yeah. Well, I like all that. Um, <laughs> yeah.
Give me.